Um, the me, my glamorous assistant, is going to be controlling the film. Well, be making the focus of his mind in the top left hand corner. It measures the EEG technology, um, the algorithms of his brain, and that will, will show that how focused he is as he watches the film. And then as the film goes on, he will have a series of challenges, three challenges. So if he's focused enough, the free runner in the film will overcome the challenges. Does everybody kind of know what free runner or parkour is? Oh, cool. You guys have all hit. <laughs> okay, parkour is an urban inner city sport originated in France. And the objective of the sport is to go from A to B in the most efficient time possible. So I've used parkour as a metaphor in a documentary-based film, um, <coughs> Overcoming Your Fear. And in this film, there'll be two free runners, one trying to outrun the other is trying to outrun his fear. Um, there's a lot more to say, but I just wanted to demo it to you, and then I'll just elaborate a bit more. Now that Lee's kind of got his level really good, now the challenge will actually start. So before it was just him coming familiar, now it's going to measure that so that for the next two minutes, if he keeps his level high enough, then he will overcome the obstacle that the free runner will have and he will get past level one. So it's gaming meets film meets interactive meets transmedia.
that challenge once finished and that he's overcome the obstacle so he's been able to make that jump. The, the mind is a muscle too, so if you train that regularly then it can become strong and stay strong. And if you don't, then it can become weaker, uh, just like a body part can if you don't, you don't use it. So as he's been successful, he's, he'll be able to go to stage two. So because Lee didn't quite wasn't focused enough, then that person didn't make the jump. If he had been, then they would have made the jump and got to level three. So it's telling him he's failed and that he's given him an indication of his focus levels, his <coughs> algorithms. So um, that's something which I've titled the Sync Self Experience, where you're focusing yourself into like a higher le level of um, focus. So that's a demo of the film. Um, I can gonna now tell you a little bit, a bit more about where, thanks so much, that's okay. really super cool, that was amazing, it. it's really good. Um, thanks. <laughs> Thank you. That's a demo of the film. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump over there and I'm going to tell you a little bit about myself. Um, I have a small production company that is called IFIF Interactive Films, which I work with to create interactive film solutions. And I work with some amazing team of people to do that. Um, Sync Self. Sync Self was shown at the v &A as part of the London Design Festival. Um, as part of the Digital Design Weekend. So uh, that was shown just like a couple weeks ago. Sync Self is Sync Self 2 actually. Um, there was a Sync Self 1. I myself am a filmmaker and a free runner. And I'm really inspired to create uh, an immersive experience of what we do as free runners, but much more in um, an authentic way to kind of show the philosophical um, the way it really like changes people in a way that it kind of forces you to confront yourself and look at who you are, look at yourself in the mirror. So that what kind of inspires me. And with Sync Self 2, it was the concept like overcoming fear. Um, and that's a definition, but everybody in this room is really hip and cool and knows what parkour is. Um, moving mindfully in wearable technology. So with my previous, this project was an evolution from Sync Self 1 which was much more about have I created app technology um, with the program I was working with, where we had an app and there's a free run and you had to be like really, really fast, otherwise I wouldn't make the jump, or you had to balance the app on your iPhone, or he wouldn't, the person wouldn't be able to balance on the screen. So I really wanted to create this like simulation. Um, but I kind of was like, that's not really enough. Like a physical simulation wasn't enough to recreate the emotional experience I wanted to create. So I had to you go into like EEG sensors and measuring your focus because it's very much about being very focused and there's this word now mindful, being very mindful of things um, and moving mindfully. Um, so it's kind of making that connection with something quite niche like parkour and making it more accessible to everybody. Um, wearable technology, wearable technology. So wearable technology is such a hip word now. Everybody's wearable technology, whether you're fit band or fuel band or whatever band. And, um, I'm quite curious with this kind of sense of obsession with data and you know what it really does and you know are you always in competition with yourself is this really healthy like I said on the podcast it's like you know you want to just always track like how fast you're going on your bike or you're running but you're kind of missing the whole point maybe it was like a really nice sunset but you're just so busy beating your time you've missed the whole point so um, I'm really curious about this whole data thing and wearable tech but I kind of wanted to use that information to come back into media, using it through media, which normally entertainment traditionally um, 
well, not for us, our type of people, but traditionally it's about shutting off and switching off and you're just detached. Where I'm like, no, no, that's like too old school. Like young people nowadays, they need to be prodded, they want to be involved, they need to be immersed, they know they really need to be a part of the experience. So I want to do it in a very kind of intelligent way where you're kind of empowering and inspiring the viewer while the experience is going on. Um, yeah, so I kind of was doing some research into it and a lot of people like in San Francisco and that are using this word like neurogaming, neurogaming, I thought it was really cool um, that you're kind of doing the gaming but you're using the neuros of your mind and I just thought that's a really cool way to go and the whole concept of the headsets, you know, they're not even that available over here yet and, you know, people are going in that direction but I'm attaching it with media. So that's still something different to that headset experience, again, taking that data to entertainment. Um, oh, yeah, I should have told you a bit more about myself. That might be helpful. So I am a digital artist. I come from a traditional filmmaking background, but my stories kind of demanded that I move to the 21st century and they become more um, the audience, as you said, the audience at the center. Um, I also have a passion for well-being and sport, parkour, and but looking at much more of a deeper concept behind these things, but making it in an accessible way. Uh, my first project, well, my first project I made was like a about actually going back a step was I used to be a music video director and do commercials and documentaries, and that was really super cool. But I kind of had to really, um, I got to the point where I had to. Um, ask myself what am I doing and why am I doing this because I'm really very much perpetuating a certain image which I didn't believe in in terms of um, when you're doing a lot of those kind of popular culture things often you have to be involved in um, guiding people that maybe they want to buy that car or they want to wear that dress or they've got to be that shape or got to have that length hair and I was like mm, that doesn't really what I want to do with my talent so I kind of was like, well, what do I want to do with my talent? Well, I actually want to inspire and empower. So I wasn't able to work with the type of artists at that time in music that would enable me to do that. So I was like, well, actually, maybe I should focus on my stories and what I want to say and figure out how I want to say it. So I made a short film, Mental Block, that was featured on the YouTube homepage, got like 190,000 hits. I was like, OK, that's cool. What next, really? And then I was like, to be, OK, I want to make interactive, well, I was kind of forced by the nature of the story to make interactive films because I'm kind of this pure artist. So the film kind of told me <laughs> it kind of the film demanded the story I wanted to tell the person had to be in the center of it. So I was like, well, I have to release my ego of that. I'm going to say the story. The person will derive their own unique experience. So that was started with the way um, that was um, screened at Westminster Reference Library um, and was part of an Arts Council Commission. Then I went on to do Evolution, um, which was part of commission as part of the Cultural Lead at the Olympics, um, which was quite cool because it was an interactive video installation again, but I also created a series of workshops with young people um, so that they could create their own experience. So I was doing filmmaking, had parkour specialists now teaching them filmmaking. And one of the cool parts was when one kid was videoing himself and was like, oh my God, I feel like I'm in the middle of a video game. I was like, oh, that's cool, that's cool. Um, and I made Sync Self One for the Royal Bar of Kensington of Chelsea as part of their In Transit Festival, um, which was quite cool. That was the one with the balancing and everything I was talking about. Um, <coughs> yeah, and then I just kind of wanted to give you an insight into my process of development. Um, so, different to the other speakers, because I'm coming from more of a, it's like, um, I'm not giving you like this much more developed kind of platform. It's like just going back to the root of what I do <laughs> um, and the creative process, because I think it's, it's really important to not get seduced by tech um, or even any form of um, tools you're gonna use, even if it's a paintbrush. So it's really important to kind of go back to what it is you're trying to say, and then you'll figure out how you're gonna say it. So I had to spend a lot of time figuring out my kind of concept and developing it and coming from like a perspective of um, say the character in the top right hand corner with it's kind of going up and down to show your <coughs> focus level I kind of developed that with the graphic designer because 
I was like, I don't want this like really little small bar that goes from red to green. I mean, that's so boring. I want to kind of sh give the impression of someone filling up with energy and getting more and more focused. And sometimes you don't even register these things on a conscious level. You just go, oh, that's really cool. You know, so just to make sure that in every aspect of what I'm doing, that it represents the spirit of the story of what I'm trying to create. Um, even the look and style. So the concept of using tech involved in storytelling is quite modern, I think, and quite cutting edge. <coughs> so it's really important that the film look quite modern and cutting edge. And that was reflected in the styling um, of what I was doing. And also the locations. Again, I think what I'm doing is like semi-futuristic. Like I really don't think people are going to have time in the future to kind of watch a film and do some kind of self-development course, but they could do both at the same time. So I really think that this is, to me, the future of like media and my future, because there's so many different types of futures, <laughs> of entertainment and media where you, you're, you're inspiring, you're improving, you're empowering, you're getting to know yourself through entertainment. It's not just this disposable thing that you do and then you do something else. Um, yeah, that's kind of the look and style. Um, and then to tech. So I looked at lots of different types of tech. Um, there's a Philips one in the middle which measures your emotions. Um, uh, melon headband. Kickstarted that last year. Still haven't got my headband, but I'm sure I get it soon. Um, the iWatch. There's so many different techs out there, but it's about which tech is the right formula for your um, to convey your experience of which your audience is at the centre at. So I kind of, I had two productions going on at the same time. I had a tech production and I had a filmmaking production, um, which was really quite interesting because I'm quite um, hyper and organised, so that worked for my character. But it was really quite, um, it's two productions going on at the same time, which demand two types of different personalities. And they also have to communicate really well with each other. Um, so say that I have this concept of this guy outrunning his fear and then I'm thinking, oh, there'll be two different options in the film. And then I'm thinking, okay, in terms of the graphic design and the interactivity, this is the way to go. And then you speak to the tech guy and he's like, well, you know, how, how, how would these be translated or how would this work? Or you speak to the free running person and he says to me, I say, oh yeah, you're going to outrun your fear. And he says like the third level, if you've got the third level where he actually says, um, I'm not trying to outrun my fear. I just, I've got to respect my fear and be the master of my fear because fear keeps you safe. But if you not master it, it can control you and take over. It has its own purpose. So that's like, as you get to each level, you get like a different kind of deeper conceptual perspective of it all. So, you know, you kind of have to then go back to the tech people and say, okay, let's, I would thought the solution was going to be like this, but actually from looking at the concept changed, we're going to go back to the solution and look at that differently. So you kind of constantly bouncing between the two and adapting things. And even I, um, I finished the film and was like, this is really cool, but it doesn't quite work. And I had to actually go away and shoot some more because it didn't quite kind of show the evolution of the, of the, um, the challenges. And what happens is that each level, what people do on the film, their focus level gets read higher and higher. So say your focus level of the first one's 50, then maybe 60, then maybe 70. It's like I had to show that graduation in the challenges the free runner was going through. So the first two was quite small, but the last one is like at the top of a three-story car park. So it would have been not good if he dropped. <coughs> um, yeah, and that's the v &A. So the v &A was so super cool. Um, they invited me to show this project in there. Um, on the, they was there for two days, and on the first day they said that they had um, really amazing feedback and uh, about 900 people engaged in the project. And that's not just um, walking past, it's actually they physically engaged and stopped. And what I found was, oh, two minutes, wow, so that's quick. So what I found was really, really cool, and I really um, didn't expect, like my highlight of the whole time there is that I was sitting there on day one, and there was like about seven youths like this just like sitting there for like an hour and a half and they were just like enthralled and like you know that's like the most ferocious like feedback you're going to get and they were just like oh they were just really quiet because they could realize there were six different outcomes if you passed off fail at each level and they were like Shh, he's doing it man he's doing it we want to see what happens and they're like oh i got to the next level and got to the next level and you know what it is like people articulated it to me afterwards is that 
I'm reaching almost hard to reach young people through their technology of what they understand, which is like iPads and gaming, but giving them a much more deeper insight, conceptual issues. Like there's one kid behind me and he's having a conversation with his mum saying, oh, but mum, I thought fear is good. And he, she's like, well, it's good, son, if it doesn't hold you back. He goes, well, when does it hold you back? And I was like, oh my God, this is like a thesis behind me. <laughs> and um, <laughs> when, he, when, he, when he left, the, the mum was like, oh my God, that was a really good conversation. I was like, yeah, it was a really good conversation. And even, um, Afterwards, like the kids didn't get, they didn't get to third level, but my friends did, and they went up to him, hey man, what's the third level? Like, what's the third level? Like, I said, like, oh man, these kids really, actually really love it. So I was really, like, really happy that they were able to access it on so many levels and stay involved. So that was like a real delight. So yeah, that's Sync Self 2. It's about focusing or failing. And um, yeah, that's me, I guess, because I've run out of time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Oh, have I got time for a couple of questions? Yes. <laughs> Hi. That's right, you, you touched right, on it, because we only saw the demo, yeah. and then we only saw one, yeah. one sort of iteration. Uh, can you just talk about, yeah. you alluded to the six there, you know, can you talk about okay, so how, there's, how that changed? Okay, so there's three levels, and each level has a pass or fail. Okay. So it would register if you've got a certain level of algorithms, which, which result it would go to on the film. So, um, so it's a binary switch. Yeah, a binary switch. And then we predetermine the level of what that would be. Um, and each level gets higher and higher. But also what I introduced into it recently was that the audio would be like a real-time indicator. So I had the voice level of somebody, the mindset of somebody failing, which is like, oh, this looks really far. I don't know if I could do it. And the mindset of somebody going, oh, um, fears in the mind. So that actually feeds back to you in real time but then you get the result of your jump or fail afterwards. So there's three, sm a small, a medium, and a large jump or fail. Hi. Uh, did you approach a neuroscientist? Yes. Yes? I did approach a neuroscientist who was really cool, a uh, professor of neuroscience in Brighton, I think. Um, I spoke to him at length. I had one meeting, and that was really super cool. Um, for that individual, he wasn't, he was, he was quite busy at that time and at, from the conversation that I had with him I got the feedback that I needed for this project but it's kind of like there's so much more to this project that I kind of want to do like I was supposed to have animation going on inside of it to show different energy levels of people's minds um, and I wanted to go deeper into like the neuroscience aspect yeah. but um, I'm going to save that for Sync Self 3 because <laughs> but that is something I really really wanted to go into in terms of like perception of reality and much more kind of quantify it a bit more. Yeah, and for example, the conversation between the mother and the son, yeah. it could be much deeper. It yeah. Could be a neuroscience and yeah. involved in that as well. Yeah. So I, I really hope you push that side. I will. It's going to be super. Oh, thank you. Oh, thanks. Hi. Are you approaching this as a. a, a just watching. I had a go earlier, yeah, you know, thanks. and I thought it was brilliant. Oh, thank and you. You think it Dozens and dozens and dozens of particular uses for it. Yeah. But you are approaching it purely as an educational tool or as a creative yeah. tool? Or okay, creative cool. Thing, or Thank you for that. Do you have equity? Uh, uh, I mean, do you have equity investors in this? Because okay. there's so much you can do with this yeah. particular That's thing. A, thank you. What was the mind? Yeah, thank you for asking that question. So I'm coming from a purely creative perspective, but I would like to exploit it completely <laughs> having made this amazing thing I'm, st I'm kind of like um, because I'm free run and I'm an artist and a filmmaker this is what I do but there's so many aspects that I can use this for and it's already before I even finish this I've already gone into the next one in my mind what I'm doing I'm already exploring different tech so I'm really keen to kind of work with people to develop um, alternative narratives for this type of storytelling solution the only my only kind of thing is that it's Inspirational and empowering. Yeah. That's my remit. That's of the endless numbers of options. If you think about what you could, how you could use it to, to train and focus professional sports. Yeah. People. That alone. But I actually, I haven't got much time. But there was a girl who came who was actually a free runner, which is this is so unique. And she said that when she was playing it, that she was imagining that she was landing on the ground and I could I see her body I moving. And um, yeah, you did, didn't you? Yeah. And um, and then what happened is she told me that she tried to actually do a. She went training the next day and there was a jump she hadn't been able to do and she used that same technique that she had done in the film and she overcame the jump. Mm. I was like, oh my God, that's like, <laughs> you've done my research for me in terms yeah, of no, the, the potential. Like when, when, when it hit the character was, was, was yeah. crashing to jump, yeah. it's kind of focusing on the stomach muscles mm. and my feet and what it would feel under my feet, concrete, and the score went right up. 
Oh. And so yeah, I think there's, there's so much you can do with this as an idea, but still keep the creative. Yeah, exactly. To it. Yeah, I'm not going to sell my soul now, yeah. but <laughs> it'd be good to eat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, um, yeah, keep working on this because this is really oh. a fantastic concept, fantastic idea. Thank you very much. Have I got time for? Oh, this, and this guy here with the hat afterwards. <laughs> okay. Um, I had a few questions redundant after you, you ex describing your experience because the thing I was interested in. Well, first of all, I'm just blown away by this. Oh, I thank you. Super cool. I think you're super cool. Oh, but, thank you. Because um, <laughs> uh, you know, I looked at the program. It was wearable technology and film, and thought, okay, that's interesting. But uh, yeah, there's, there's so much more going on here. Mm -hmm. But going back to the wearable technology thing and looking at it and thinking about. Um, the EEG sort of neural engagement. I was wondering if, if at any point you considered using a wearable camera on your parkour runner. I did that in the first film. I don't know whether that would intensify the. I so you created point of view, so it would. I did that on the first two. Engagement. I did the first two, and then the the second one, evolution. Yeah. It was um, his, his head camera and the voiceover. <laughs> you could select because it was multiple voiceovers. Oh. Was actually what was going on in his head. So you could either choose like the voice of the, the music, um, a philosophical perspective of how people's identity changes and how you're kind of physically connect, connect yourself to an identity that you're constantly should be fluid to. Um, and then there was like the soundscape of the falling and the jumping. And so when he was talking in his head, like, oh, I can do this or I can't, then you'd have that point of view. Yeah. So the first two, I completely rinsed that, like that perspective yeah. and was like, okay, cool. I've done that perspective. Now, how can I really, not just visual, it's like an emotional connection. Yeah. And then I went, oh, I've got to go to tech, got to go to tech. Right. So yeah, but I have gone there. But it's not, I may, I may go back there again though, because you constantly got to go, okay, tech, film, tech, film. Right. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> the guy with the hat, the guy with the hat. It was, it was the same question oh, okay. about whether you considered GoPro. Cameras. Yeah, I've, killed, I've done that in the first two. And it was almost like the first decision to kind of go for. And <coughs> it was like, okay, cool, everybody's done that now. I was kind of just ahead of the curve. Um, what next? So I had to kind of, you constantly got to be flipping between storytelling, visual, making sure it's cinematic, because I'm a filmmaker, it's got to look good, but then also the tech is going to be a part of that emotional experience as well. Okay, I'm going. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks.